Hello and welcome to this look at the Beat Reactor in Boris Continuum with me, Ben Brownlee from Boris Effects. Now the Beat Reactor is our way of using audio to control the effects parameters in interesting and unusual ways so that we can create cool animations without using a single keyframe. So let's have a look at some of the things that we can do with the Beat Reactor. So let's see how we can use the Continuum Beat Reactor in Adobe. We're going to be focused on Premiere Pro, but as ever, all of these same features work in Adobe After Effects. Now, the basic concept behind Beat Reactor is being able to drive filter properties using an audio track. And let's take a look at how that's going to work on our first clip. I use just a simple effect like a BCC Fast Film Glow. And let's find a frame where we're going to get some nice glowy effects. And I'm going to turn my intensity up quite high so we can start to see this really easily. Okay, so there's going to be no mistaking this. Now, if I come down to the bottom of my effect in the effects controls, I can enable Beat Reactor. And in Premiere, the first thing we have to do is to choose an external file. In After Effects, we can also choose a different layer in the comp for it to work with there. But as we're in Premiere, let's load in a file, and I'm just going to use my Beat Reactor. And as soon as I bring this up, we get a graphical representation of what the different frequencies are doing in our clip. So we have our bass frequencies over here, we have our midtones, and we have the treble over in the right hand side. Now, if I come down to the Beat Reactor, we have three different parameters we can affect with this one audio clip. Uh, I'm just going to focus on parameter A for this first clip, and I'm going to choose what I want to affect. In this case, I think that the glow intensity is going to be the interesting one. And as soon as I change that, we get this little sampler box. I can use this to decide what frequencies Beat Reactor is going to sample. So in this case, I'm going to make something quite, uh, quite small and quite limited. I only want it when this particular bass value, this particular bass drum hits. Actually, maybe even something over here. This would be a bit more interesting because it doesn't play back quite as much. And once I have this selected, you can see what the relative value is going to be on that frequency. So if I move off of it, you can see that value gets lower. And as I move over, you can see that value gets filled. And it's this relative value that's going to be very important to us. And the next stage is back over in the effects controls. And it's how we apply this. So I open up the audio apply. Options A, and I can choose whether we're going to add this to the value, replace the value, or subtract it from the value. Here I'm going to replace the value. And I can set my minimum to zero and my output maximum. Well, I want that to be around about where we had it before, which is 832. So that's going to give us quite a nice big effect. When I'm happy with that, I can turn off the graph and play this back. Actually, just to show you that it is only hitting when the graph is hitting, I'll play that back with the graph on as well. We can do things that are a little bit more complicated as well. So if I come to my second clip, I'm going to add in a BCC prism over on the top here. And if we look at the effects browser, you can get an idea of what type of effects we can, we can get with the prism. It's kind of an interesting way of smearing and blurring up color channels. And it's an effect that works really well with the Beat Reactor. I'm going to cancel that out because I'm actually going to load up one of my presets that I've already made. There we go. And it's nothing too, nothing too wild yet. And it's not really doing anything because obviously we haven't activated the Beat Reactor. So let's do that. And again, we'll load in our external file. And let's take a look at the graph. The graph shows us that we're hitting a slightly different frequency for our effect, but the idea is the same. And if we come over to the effect controls again, you can see that I'm using the beat reactor on three different parameters, the ending depth, the ending angle, and the starting angle. If I open up my ending angle and take a look at the sampler, I've linked the values on the other parameters to the sampler on parameter A. So that means when I change the parameter on parameter A, it changes it for everything. I could, of course, set this up in a different way to be reacting to different frequencies. This is a nice way of driving music visualizations, for example. What I've also got is a fall off. I turn the fall off 
off, what's going to happen is that as soon as these reactions happen, as it goes away from max strength, it's going to go back down to zero straight away. In fact, let's change this up so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So as it falls off from max strength, it goes straight away from being on to being off. If we use one of these fall off values, I use quadratic soft, you can see that on parameter B, where all the other ones have fallen off to zero, parameter B is still up high because it's falling off over half a second. So it goes back from its maximum value to going back down to zero over half a second. So this can help to smooth out some of those big changes if you're getting you know, too dramatic an effect or too sharp an effect. Another way of using the fall off is to build up. So instead of dropping off, it actually just builds up either to its maximum amount or just keeps building up indefinitely. So you'll see in this case, if I just render this out and play this through, that the ending angle builds up indefinitely rather than just falling back down to its original area. We can see this working even more with something like the ending depth, where we end up just getting closer and closer to the girl. When I'm happy with this, I'll just turn the graph off and I'll render this out one more time and let that play back. Now, obviously, there are lots of things that we can do with the beat reactor, and each effect that contains the beat reactor can be tied to different parameters. And one of the huge advantages with having it directly within the effect is that we don't have to export out keyframes or copy keyframes or link keyframes. It all just works immediately as we change the parameters. If you're working in After Effects and you do want to link things up together, for example, with expressions, then there is a BCC Beat Reactor as a separate effect, which you can use to drive any keyframeable parameter within After Effects. But that's a quick look about how we use Continuance Beat Reactor in Adobe. If you found this video useful, then remember to hit the like button. For more ways to master Boris Continuum in Adobe, subscribe to the Boris Effects YouTube channel and check out our other tutorials. If there's something missing, then let me know in the comments below. My name is Ben Brownlee from Boris Effects. Thanks for now.